Praise the Lord, everybody. I said, praise the Lord, everybody. We'd like to thank you for coming into the sanctuary on this morning. And for those of us who are watching, hallelujah, we'd like to invite you in. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. We're going to bless the Lord on this morning.
Psalms 116. The Lord is my portion of my inheritance in my cup. The maintained of my lot. The lines are falling upon me in the pleasant place. Yet I am a godly inheritor. I will bless the Lord who have given me counsel. I will bring also instructions me in the night of season. I have set the Lord also before me. Amen. Amen. New Testament will be from Matthew 17. And after six days, Jesus taken Peter, Jane, and John, his brother, and brought them up to a high mountain apart. And it was a transfiguration before them. And after he faced and shined as a sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there was an appearance upon them, Moses and Elijah, talking with him. And they answered Peter and said unto him, Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here, and thou wilt. Let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While yet he spoke, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, and who I am well pleased with. And you hear him. Amen.
should be of. And we thank God, amen, Bishop F. did an awesome job remodeling. I think he got here. I think he thanked you, Bill House, I believe. I think he thanked your contractor, general contractor. And amen, he have did an awesome job, amen. I mean, you come into church, and, and, and uh, even in the old church, just blessing, amen. But amen, you get your offering out, amen. The deacons, you can pass it to the right. And I in the aisle, center aisle. Yeah, some on the left. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes.
What state? Washington. She said, as far as y'all know out of sight, when you talk about Washington State, not DC, but she way out there. I'm so grateful for her. Sorry for being here. I wish she'd been here. Probably working from home. And, amen. amen. Thank God for her. Amen. amen. Love you. My, my brother right here. Amen. Talk to us. Your first cup? Oh, y'all work? Okay. All right, G. All right. So good. He looked for me. I have to see him when I do mass. I'm going to look so familiar. Amen. So honored that you're here. Give God praise for the cook brothers. The cook brothers. Amen. It's an honor to be able to attend service with your brother. I'm telling you. Not just one brother, but three brothers together. That is an awesome thing. We are in the midst of celebrating, it really is, this feels somewhat painful thing just to think about the 100 year celebration of the uh, Black Wall Street massacre that took place in Tus Tussle, Oklahoma. And a lot of y'all may not be watching the news, but they are commemorating that, that uh, 100 years these black people, they were, they called it Wall Street because they was well off. Some had been a lot of business. It was a business, black business district. They had hotels. And they had um, all type business. And then, you know, it's a bad thing when the government blow you up and kill you. And so now they are celebrating. And so still trying to just, just the pain of and, and it excites me now, as you probably hear me say all the time, and tell you all to save something and to put you something aside. You know, don't just spin it all. But uh, a lot of these young, the younger generation, and I didn't even look young guy. You know, a lot of their mindset they're into this, to investing. Amen. They they open they Robin Hood's account. That's why Robin Hood done exploded like it had because it's not the older investors in there, it's some young, young folk, five, two, three, four, five hundred dollars, they put it into the uh, buying stocks and cryptocurrency. And, and um, I'm not telling you to do that, but that is, that is the mindset of these young folk. They want them, they want them a brokerage account to be able to trade, amen. It's not, it's not, not a hard thing to buy a stock. Telling you, you know, the cryptocurrency. If you see everybody else doing this, you better get you a little bit of it. You hear me? Amen. When you see them institutions get some of it, the Elon Musk with billionaires, and you see JP Morgan, the, the bigger folk getting it, get you a little bit of it. Amen. I ain't telling you to put a lot in there, but to get you a little bit of it. Because they're not going to have all that big, them billions and billions and billions of dollars. Uh, Bitcoin went up to a, a trillion. And I end up pulling back some. But anytime, anytime something's going to go up, you know the stock market. And I've watched the stock market, been trading since 2000. So you, the, nothing going to go straight up. So don't expect the, the, your stock to go straight up. Don't expect your, your coin of whatever type coin you get, everybody's with the Dodge coin now. You know, they that's a hot thing. You don't pull back some. That when that happened, when I look at that in the stock market, all I do is go back and get me some more. If I get it up here and it pull back, I'm gonna jump in at a lower price. And so now, and that's all you gotta do when you trade. You just go watch it because they're gonna have a pullback. Once you get over bought, they're gonna take a breather. Once they get oversold, it's gonna shoot back up. Just learn your technicals and learn how to trade. The young folks, y'all, all this money that's floating out here, we've been hollering about the wealth of the sinners laid up for the just. Don't y'all miss it now. Don't y'all miss it. Don't y'all spin all and think that all oh, these times comes around like they like like every so often. They're not gonna be like that. You gotta take advantage of that wave and you gotta ride that. But Black Wall Street was all predominantly black, and they were 
bombed and killed so many. I think it was about 300 some of them was killed. They was they was self sufficient, self sustaining. They had business. One black and they was interviewed some of the family members. Had a hotels and one of the biggest hotels and uh, of, of especially among black people during that time. You know, and that's back in the. 19, I believe, 21, way back there then. So now they are celebrating it. Black Wall Street, they call it, out in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They killed all the black folk, burned their houses down, destroyed their business. They were some powerful folks. And they were, they, because when they see, they were moving like that. And the money that they was accumulating. So the, it's a bad thing when the government gets you. The government. But continue to pray for them. Pray for them. Pray for those uh the uh the, the, the those that are related. They had some of the ones related to that. One lady, she was like 107 years old and they was interviewing her. But, but the reason why I said that, put your song aside. Put your song aside. Don't spend all your money. Put your song aside. If it ain't never Ten, fifteen dollars a month. Put something aside. Amen. Put something aside. Am I right? Amen. Amen. Put something aside. All this money that's been floating around. And some family have close to fifteen, twenty thousand. If you're not gonna save nothing monthly or weekly, that was a time for you could have chopped that in half and put half of it in a savings. I know we're gonna tempt you until the next time around, but you gotta be strong. I, I'm celebrating because of such a dynamic woman, and I'm honored to, we're going to get into the message, I'm honored to know her. She's, her legacy will, will continue to live, and she just got her, uh, she's been involved in the prison ministry and outreach into the prison system, and she just, um, she sent, uh, sent me a message or a text that she had gotten her. Uh, our certification as to being a chaplain in the prison system. And I'm talking about no, uh, the Honorable Maddie, Maddie Clark. Give God a praise. Come on. Amen. 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 I see some of them letters her mail, they go in her mail, they be young men that she have impacted their life. They write from all different places. And I'm so grateful. And, and she's told me she was, has been an assistant chaplain, but now amen, her, your, your gift will make room for you. Amen. It will bring you before great men. Say amen. 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 Your gift will do it. Continue to be proudful, proudful for each other. Pray for each other. In the book of Acts, please. The book of Acts. Acts of the Apostles. Amen. Pray for the uh, the Gibson family. Amen. Jerry Gibson. Pastor Jerry Gibson family. Pray for them. The Gibson family. During their time of grief. All the bereaved families, all the sick and shedding. Amen. Be prayerful. I love you so dearly, saints. I'm so grateful. Thank God I've been praying for you. I miss you. Miss you so. Miss you so. Now we are, we are. When you go into the activity building, you're gonna see us. We're gonna all we do it. We're gonna all we do it. We're gonna be painting. We put down new floor and be fixing upgrading the bathrooms and uh, and doing a lot, lot over there. Now what you thought that may have been yours before the job, you may not long, no longer see it. <laughs> if you're gonna blame somebody, blame me. Because a lot of that stuff gonna have to come out of there. We got uh, uh, we got to, we get ready to paint the outside of the building. Us brothers gonna do that. Your pastor started pressure washing it, but you, us brothers, hopefully, if not, we'll, we'll get it rolled. We're just gonna roll it, roll it. Now the inside, we'll do something different. Acts the first chapter, please. Acts the first chapter. 
Bless the Lord, oh my soul. My God. Bless his holy name. Forget not all his benefits. Thank you, Jesus. Acts, the first chapter, the first verse. The formal treaties have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Unto the day in which he was taken up after that, he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which says. He, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times, the cross, or the season, the carols, which the Father has put in his own power, dynamis, exclusive. But ye shall receive power, dynamis. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. God bless your word. We thank you for who you are. But especially for what you are. You are a way maker. You are the deliverer. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation. Have your way. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the first verse, where I would place great emphasis on for my subject, the formal treaties have I made, O Theophilus, lover of God. Theophilus, lover of God. In Luke, the first chapter, the third verse, they call him most excellent, most excellent Theophilus. Now here, O Theophilus, lover of God, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach of all that Jesus began both to do and teach I want to just encourage your minds and your hearts for you just to think about the subject unfinished 
business. Amen. 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 Unfinished business. Unfinished business. It is something here when we look here in the book of Acts, Luke being the writer of Acts, and also he was a writer of the gospel according to St. Luke. It is amazing here because this first chapter of Acts, it is a link between the gospels and the opening of the church, the Acts of the Apostles. This first chapter is really not the, the actual beginning of the Acts because the Acts really starts in the second chapter. This is really the introduction. It is something here because when he talks to old Theophilus, Theophilus, lover of God, and he called him most excellent in Luke, the first chapter, and, and but he had to be one of Paul's Roman acquaintance because Paul was when he was Saul he was very strong in Judaism you all know that Saul had the Damascus Road experience Amen. God changed him and stopped him asked him you know why are you persecuting it's hard to kick against the prince he blinded him sent him down to see one of his apostles. And God changed him from Saul to Paul. It is amazing that God going to do something awesome in your life. He has to change you. Am I right? You know, he had to change you. He had, he had to change me. I could not I, you cannot be who God wants you to be or become who God wants you to become with the same uh, intentions and the same characteristics and the same attitude. You have to, this is why it's so critical when he talks about the new birth being born again. It is, it is not that we get a new body, but our spirit, spirit is changed. God had to change my thoughts, had to change my outlook on life. Things that I, that he had to change from wanting to do the things that I was once doing. God has to change. When he talks here in this particular text here, as he talks to an old Theophilus, Theophilus being um, acquainted with Paul, during the time when he was persecuting the church, but then when Theophilus saw him change, he changed. You know, it is amazing that you can have your road dogs and your homeboys and your homegirls, and they'll run with you. They'll do, and they really, you know, people call them the ride or die folks and all this. You know, they, they'll do, if you in a fight, they they in the fight with you. I'm telling you. But the greatest thing that a lot of times people will see, especially when you transition into the Lord and want to be saved, they may not necessarily jump in out with you right then, but they're going to watch you. They're going to watch you and make sure that you're sincere and serious about it. And so I can imagine that, that oh, oh, Theophilus, now I, Paul, saw, when you were saw, I seen you when you persecuted the church. I was right there with you doing some of that foolishness. Matter of fact, when you were going to get the letter from the Roman government or the emperor, I was right there with you. And so I have to imagine the saints that when God changed him from Saul to Paul, that he did something to old Theophilus. That if God can change him, I know he can change me. 
Somebody give God some praise. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Because when Theophilus, oh, Theophilus wanted, I, I bet he was just kind of, he, he was kind of standing back for a moment. But then after he saw that what God was doing in Paul's life, that it was real, that he began to thirst and hunger after the same thing that God had given him. What Almighty God we serve, church. And so now when we think about how, how wonderful this text is here because now it is when you read it, he says, unto the day. This was 40 days. He was with them 40 days. The, the 40 days after the resurrection came the ascension. And then 10 days later came the uh, Pentecost. And so now he's building, he's been, he showed himself several times to them through by infallible proof that God is God and spending time. He would, it's not necessary to hold 40 days with them, but every so within the 40 days, he, my God, God would show himself. And because now he's getting ready for his ascension. Then 10 days later, he's getting ready to send down the power of good God. But when you read this text here, it is amazing because when he talks about when he was taken up, after that he threw the Holy Ghost and giving commandments. Because now this was beginning of the fulfillment of the great commission that he commissioned them in St. Mary through the 28th chapter when he told them to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name singular of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. But then, even before then, he told them to be, he knew that they needed some help in order to fulfill the Great Commission. And now, he, we are at the time now that God is getting ready, the Lord is getting ready to give them the power. He's getting ready to pour some on them. In order for you to be saved, in order for you to be, live the way God would have you to live, we all need some help. Some help. How would I need some help? I could not, I, I wanted to do, but I couldn't do it by myself. I needed some help. I needed some because when you think about this here now, he shows himself to allow that the passion by infallible proof that he is God. He is the Lord. There have been many times that the Lord has showed up in your life. My God, that he has he have revealed and manifested himself. That without a shadow of doubt, you know that it had to be the Lord. I walked away from some stuff. I was able to crawl out of some stuff. I crawled out of some stuff. And it had to be the Lord. Brought you through. Because if it had not been God that was on your side, the enemy would have took you out. But because God had his hands on you, somebody shout, God, keep your hands on me. He had his hands on you. And his hand was his grace. His hand is grace. Carries his divine influence that's reflected in our life. To really appreciate grace, you have to allow it to come forth through how the way you live. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all, all the way home on that. Because if you're going to appreciate mercy and grace, God has this. It has to be, it has to God give it, and you give it yourself to Him. So that He can see you is to find the influence. When the devil is setting trap for you, trying to trip you up. God allowed you to go around some stuff. Hallelujah. 
God brought you. God brought you out another way. To God be the glory. He revealed it to you. So you don't do that. The Holy Ghost will speak to you. The Holy Ghost will warn you. Now here he's dealing with them because he knows that they need some power. Yeah. And he showed them some infallible proofs. You all knew that down Thomas. Thomas, yes. he didn't believe it. Yeah. He had to <laughs> stuck his hand in God's body. The Lord's body stuck his hands in his hand. Mm -hmm. Then he began to
somebody shout, touch me again. Oh, touch my mind. So I continue to think right. Touch my hands, Lord. So I touch what you want me to touch. Touch my feet, Lord. So I walk the way you want me to walk. Somebody give God some praise. Somebody clap your hand and say, touch me again, Lord. Glory. Oh, yes. Give God some glory. Come on, give God some praise. So now, when we look here in this particular text here, the context of the text is the fact that the Lord began both to do and to there's a scripture say greater works than these. But the greater works will not be done without the Lord. The greater works will be done through by the Lord. Yes. Because it's going to be God working in you and through you. And it will still be as Jesus is doing it because it is him that leading and guiding and instructing you and showing you how to do what he both began to do and to teach. Amen. It is something here because the book of Acts is so amazing. Because it was the introduction of the church. You hear me oftentimes say that Peter, very instrumental, one in the upper room, he was one that preached on the day of Pentecost and over 3,000 were saved. And those Jews that were there during Pentecost, they also heard them speak. God was blessing those on the inside, filling them with the Holy Ghost, and witnessing to those on the outside. This is why when you read the second chapter of Acts, it will act, they would ask men and brother, what shall we do? Yeah. Then Peter would tell them to repent and to be baptized, all of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sin, because they it was it was God poured it out on them during the third hour of the day, being the nine o'clock according to Jewish time. Because they go from six to six, so six, seven, eight, nine, and just three hours. And they thought they was drunk. But they were drunk, but they was drunk of the Holy Ghost. When he talks to them, he began to tell them when they were, when they therefore will come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, without at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel. Because in time past, everybody brought things to Israel. But this time, God was going to bless them and allow things to go out from Israel. And it's been like that ever since. And so now, he said unto them, it is not for you to know the chronos, the time. A particular, in the Greek, duration. Are the seeds of the carol. Because God can bless you in the fall, the winter, the spring, the summer. You don't need just a particular season. God can give you a season within the season. Check it out. You can be, you can be in the spring. Blessing. You can be in the winter and it can be 50 
feet below. But God can bless you in a way that you will think you're in a whole nother season. This is why it's not for you to know the carols. The time. You just need to be doing what God has instructed you to do. And when you do that, saints, God will bless you. I'm telling you now. God will turn some stuff around. God will open up some doors. God will get the enemy off your tracks. God will bring you through some places. People will be wondering how you got out of it. They'll be wondering why you still standing. They'll be wondering why you still got a praise. They'll be wondering why you didn't throw in the towel. They'll be wondering why you didn't quit and sit down. But then because it was the Lord that was on my side. When the enemy came in to eat on my flesh, they stumbled in faith. God allowed your situation to stumble. They stumbled first. And then they failed. But what God to see it going down. Because most of the time if you stumble, nobody, a lot of times they don't, re re they don't regain their stability. And so he said they stumbled and failed. They stumbled and failed. Throwing whole shit and kept against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Somebody praise you, church. So now, we here look at this particular eight verse. He said, but ye shall receive power. When you look at this power here, it is a combination of dynamis, strength, force, and might. But it is also tied in with ecclesia. Because what we see here in the eighth verse, we not only see the power but we also see the program. Because I'm going to give you some dynamis. And I'm going to give you some dynamite. And I'm going to give you some strength. And I'm going to give you some motivation. And I'm going to give you some excitement. I'm going to give you some determination. And so now, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you because now I'm putting you in a position to fulfill the Great Commission. Because I know and I knew that you could not do it if you didn't have no power. Oh, glory. Somebody shout power. Shall, because now the power you you God is going to give you the the, the 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 ability to to be able to exercise your force and your faculties connected with dynamite. Because when the devil sees you coming, my God, he he going to think that you discouraged and depressed, but he don't realize you get ready to explode. Some of y'all get ready to explode. Some of y'all get ready to blow up again. You know how they the words that you're going to blow up, but you get ready to blow up in the law. Uh-huh. 
my God. Watch God, watch God now judge me because, because what he's going to do allow you to have some dynamite. Dynamus along with the ecclesia. The ability to be able to, to be powerful and to be strong in the Lord in carrying out his program. Because in what you see here, you shall be a witness. Both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uppermost parts of the earth. Because when you read the whole book of Acts, the first through the seventh verse, chapters, they are specifically to Jerusalem. But then when you read the 8th through the 12th chapters, they are for Judea and Samaria. And when you read the 13th through the 28th chapter, you're going to see that it's for the uttermost one. That's us there. Now they get us in there. Because now it's pointing toward the Gentiles. This is why they ask him, will you again be able to restore Israel and do all this? No, what God did for Israel, it has now branched out. And we are now recipients. And we are now in a place to get what Israel been get all the time. So now, when we begin text, you have to understand that there would not be no church without the Holy Ghost. Right. My experience, my experience involving the Holy Ghost, it has enabled me to be victorious in living this life. And it has also put me in a place to be able to do what God has called me to do. And if it had not been for the Holy Ghost, none of us would not be able to do what we have done. And this is why he knew that these disciples and apostles, he knew that they needed the Holy Ghost. And so this is why he this is why he told them in Luke, go to Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. My brothers and sisters, I want you to understand something that 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 Luke, the gospel of Luke and the Acts, they are the twin volumes because it is through those two books that you will see the great history as it pertains to salvation. Somebody you got some praise. And also that in, in Luke and also in Acts, you will see that my God there, that there is a continuation of God's plan for the church until the end of time. Somebody shout glory. My God, this is why I submit to you uh, that we got some unfinished business uh, because I st God still want us to be on the battlefield uh, and God still want us to be telling somebody uh, that God will make a way, uh, that God can save you, uh, that God can bring you to, uh, that God can bring you out, uh, that God is a healer. Uh, to tell somebody that even in spite of all that we are going to I still got to pray somebody say yes clap your hand and praise him for the Lord he is good oh God and his mercy is everlasting his truth is new to all generations I come to tell somebody that I've got some unfinished business I want the devil to know that the Holy Ghost is still real. I still
still got joy. I still got a dance. I still got a clapping in my hand. Say yes. I'm not even praising. I got some unfinished business. It's down on the inside. You can't take my joy. You can't take my peace. I've got a made up mind. Somebody say yes. That God is still able. He's able. He's able. He's able. Somebody say he's able. He's able. Clap your hand and say he's able. He's able. But I want you to know that if he don't do it, I still won't bow. Say yes. I've got some unfinished business of all that Jesus began to go through and to teach. Now we got to take the baton and keep on running with it. Run through your storm. Run through sickness. Run through your trials. We got to get to the finish line. Say yes. Somebody shout glory. I've got some unfinished business.
for the job. Yes. Yes. And this is what he was doing right here. He was equipping them for the job, for the task, for the circumstances, for the situations they were facing, for the storms and trials.
you will never be able to do it without the Holy Ghost. It's the Great Commission will never be able to be fulfilled without the Holy Ghost. Unfinished business. I love you. You all that are watching and listening to the YouTubers and the Facebook. We pray for you. You got unfinished business. I still got to Because in Acts 1 and 8, you see the power and the program. The program is that the power of being dynamous at your seal, being able to use the force of the faculties and do a forceful and strengthened way. But the program is that we got to keep doing evangelizing work. Because they go from Jerusalem to hell, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And so now, when he goes to the uttermost that brought in the Gentiles, God has opened an opportunity. And so now, what Jesus began both to do and to teach, and what he did then, he can do it now through by the Holy Ghost. Somebody says, send your power! Send your power! Send your power, Lord! Send your power. We need your power. We need your power. We need your power. Hallelujah. You are not saved. Get saved. Get in the church. Repent. Be baptized in water. In Jesus' name, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Because we all got unfinished business. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore. Lord, I love you. Do you love the Lord? We'll worship him then. You got all of you got our finished business. So it's all the way love you. Love you. Your brother really blessed us. I know you probably told your sister too. Allergies <laughs> out. To tell you.